The main purpose of a dairy cow is to produce milk. It should also reproduce to provide replacement cows for the future and provide a means of living for farmers in the dairy business by producing the most milk at the least possible cost. Many farmers searching for the best dairy cow for business always ask which is the best dairy cow. Many times farmers have walked into a farm, pointed at a cow and made a purchase simply because the cow looked fantastic. So some sellers have taken advantage of this and inflated the prices of the animals to catch the attention of such farmers. I just bought them from farmers. I don't know their origin. So I wanted to register them and I was told that they are going to be foundation for my breeding. Now what is a good dairy cow? A good dairy cow depends on what you want and where you are. Farmers who require milk for home consumption have different requirements from commercial producers. Residents in arid and semi-arid lands will choose a different animal from those in high potential areas. In Kenya, Milk butter fat content does not determine milk prices. Therefore, if the aim is commercial milk production, then you should go for a breed that is known for high milk production. When the farmers are selling their milk, they are not paid according to the amount of butter fat or protein or, uh, in the milk. They, they are paid according to the volume. So we advise them to go for that volume so that they can get more money. And the only animal that, that can give that higher volume is the Frisian. On the other hand, if the aim is butter, ghee or cheese for the home, then the choice should be a cow that has more butter fat in the milk. The type of cattle that I keep are the ashes. And I'm glad because my customers like the milk because of its quality. Yeah. The next step is to decide which breed of cow best meets your individual needs. You may prefer the black and white colors of the Holstein Frasian or the reddish orange or white of the Guernsey, but all are high milk producers. Your choice will be based on the important dairy breeds known in Kenya and their availability. Your decision should be based on available information about productivity, fertility, and longevity. The Freshian is known to be a high producer of milk with an average production of uh, between 20 and 30 liters per day. But uh, the, the, the milk, the quality of the milk is of low butterfat. Then also Freshians have been known to have very high incidences of, of mastitis. First, ask yourself to what extent you have prepared for the introduction of the new dairy cow. You have to make sure that their nutritional needs will be met because it is not just about the initial cost but the subsequent upkeep of the cow. If you can afford a good cow, know that a high milk producer will require high levels of management. On the other hand, it will be meaningful to go for a cheaper cow that will go well with your level of management. Now that you've decided on the type of cow that best fits your needs, you are ready to go shopping. Always be aware that other farmers put on sale cows that are being curled from the herd or not producing enough milk. Cows which have deformities, cows which should not become pregnant, cows with temperamental problems, and cows which are chronic carriers of disease. My officer went to Kilimo, and he found out that he was born in Maniki. He found out that he was born in Maniki. And he found out that he was born in Maniki. And he found out that he was born in Maniki. And he found out that he was born in Maniki. 
kwa sababu sokoni hautapata ngombe mzuri inauswa kwa sababu labda ni mgonjwa au labda ina matatizo fulani irrespective of the breed you have settled for there are a few basic rules to follow when purchasing your cow so what are you supposed to look for body capacity viewed from the side a cow with a deep long body with wide well sprung ribs is said to have a large body capacity large body capacity is associated with superior milk production a dairy cow with little body capacity is not a great milk producer the, the, the other character is a, a cow that has a v a shape or triangular shape so a cow that has a triangular shape uh, shows that it's a, a dairy uh, character a broad muzzle implies the ability to get the food into her mouth and to chew her cud effectively cows with a narrow chest as determined by the width between the four legs are not normally good producers also if at least two fingers can be placed between the ribs of a dairy cow, she is said to have great capacity. Functional conformation. The udder should be your main priority. It must be pliable, silky in texture, and sark like in nature. When viewed from the side, it should not hang below the cow's hock but should be close to the body, giving an appearance of support rather than swinging loosely and freely. It should be full and firm with no hard spots, redness or swelling. The central suspensory ligament must be strong and well attached. Remember that a large udder is not always a sign that a cow is a good producer kwa sababu kununua ngombe ambayo iko na ada kubwa management yake itakuwa ni ngumu kwa sababu kila mara utakuwa na shida ambayo itakuwa ina furuta chini inapatwa na ugonjwa wa mastitis kila siku na tunataka to breed ngombe ambaye ada yake iko juu ambaye maziwa yake ijaribu kuangalia ada sio kubwa itakuwa ni medium na utaweza kufaulu teeth placement is next in importance the teeth should be even medium sized and centrally placed on each quarter of the udder. Over and undersized teeth should be avoided. And the teeth are, are uh, medium in terms of uh, the size, maybe about uh, three, uh, three inch uh, length. The milky veins should be demonstrated on the under because it, pro uh, it uh, predicts the amount of milk the animal could could it produce. Note that teats of older cows appear fuller than those of younger ones. A teat that is not working will look much smaller than the other teats. Mastitis is a common problem in most farms. Find out whether the farm has had a problem of mastitis and what actions they have taken to control it. Avoid introducing a chronic carrier into your farm. Uh, maybe if you are hand milking, then the milkers must be well prepared in terms of how to milk, so that uh, you avoid other problems that might set in for when you are, you are, uh, do poor milking. And if the farmer decides to do machine milking, uh, like it happens on this farm, then uh, you will achieve. Uh, the best in terms of uh, uh, other management because the farmer will uh, 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 properly empty the udder. And like for hand milling, sometimes when you have a hand milker who is lazy or slow, then a lot of milk will remain and hence that cow is predisposed to mastitis infection. Good feet and strong legs are important in case cows have to walk long distances to and from their feed. From the side, the hind leg should be slightly sickle shaped with a steep pastern. Any cow which is unable to stand up and walk with ease is useless 
even if she has the most perfect udder in the world. The legs of a cow should be clean and blemish free, and she should walk without signs of lameness. Easy care, management, temperament, health. Avoid cows with temperament problems. The cow should have a calm and easy disposition. Observe the behavior of people walking around her. This should tell you a lot about her. Many cows with a chronic disease will show symptoms, but others will show nothing. If the cow is very thin and rough coated, she could merely need a good deworming and feeding. Or she could be chronically ill with any of a number of non fatal diseases, in which case she will probably never look any better and may even infect your other livestock. Ask for assistance from your nearest veterinary officer to perform a health examination. Productivity records. Dairymen cull out cows who give less milk. Ask to see records if you have any doubt. Confirm that the milk produced per day is a reasonable amount. Also, note the amount of milk produced during peak lactation periods and the number of days the cow is in production. The recommended lactation period of a milking cow is usually 305 days. If the cow is not already pregnant, it would be in the best interest of your dairy business to get the cow pregnant as soon as possible and get it in milk. A pregnancy diagnosis with the assistance of a veterinarian should confirm pregnancy. The breeding history should indicate an average of 380 days period between calving. If the cow didn't breed when she should have, find out what the reason was. She may have serious problems. Dairiness. The refinement you want to see in dairy cows is related to sharpness across the shoulders instead of being broad and biffy. Character should not be so fleshy. It must be uh, moderate in terms of uh, fleshiness. The back should be straight with prominent hip bones. And her neck and head should move freely with no stiffness. Eyes should be clear and dark and free from blue or white spots. And the tail should be thin and fine instead of a thick, robust and coarse. Now you can go ahead and purchase the best dairy cow. Dairy breeds. All cows can produce milk, but the most suitable for commercial production are few. The most important dairy breeds of cattle in Kenya are Frisian, Asha, Gansi, and Jersey breeds. The rest are either good for beef or as dual purpose animals. The Frisian. The Frisian cow originated in the Netherlands and are most quickly recognized by their distinctive black and white color markings and outstanding milk production. Frisians are large animals with color patterns of black and white or red and white. A healthy Frisian calf weighs 40 kilograms or more at birth. A mature Frisian cow weighs about 700 kilograms and stands 150 centimeters tall at the shoulder. Frisian heifers can be bred at 15 months of age when they weigh about 360 kilograms. It is desirable to have Frisian females calf for the first time between 24 and 27 months of age. While some cows may live considerably longer, 
the normal productive life of a Frisian cow is six years. The average milk production for Frisian cow is 7,800 kilograms of milk per lactation. Asha. The Ashaya breed originated from Scotland. Ashaya is an efficient grazer, noted for her vigor and efficiency in milk production. The cow is especially noted for the superior shape and quality of her udder. The composition of her milk makes her suitable for the production of butter and cheese. Purebred Ashers only produce red and white offspring. They are medium in size and weigh over 540 kilograms at maturity. They are adapted to all management systems and are not subject to excessive food and leg problems. Ashaya cattle do better under pasture conditions compared to other major dairy breeds. When pastures are poor, they need fewer supplements to keep them in good condition. These traits make Ashers outstanding commercial dairy cattle. Under good management and feeding practices, the average milk production ranges from 5,400 kilograms of milk with a 3.9% test to as high as 7,800 kilograms of milk per lactation. The Gansi Gansi is a medium weight cattle that originated from England. The cow is known for producing high quality milk while consuming 20 to 30 percent less feed per kilogram of milk produced compared to larger dairy breeds. They are also known for having a lower projected calving interval and have a younger average age of fast calf heifers than the larger breeds. Their lack of any known undesirable genetic recessives and their adaptability to warmer climates makes them very attractive to commercial dairy farmers. The Gansi is also an excellent grazer. She is a cow that is made for pasture-based milk production. Because of her grazing abilities, gentle disposition, calving ease, and ability to efficiently produce milk with less feed than any other breeds, she is the ideal candidate for intensive grazing. Dairy producers can realize her profit potential while reducing management costs. Average milk production for the breed is 6,650 kilograms of milk per lactation. The Jersey The Jersey breed originated from the English island of Jersey. The Jersey cow weighs about 450 kilograms on average, making them the smallest dairy breed in size. The breed was regarded very favorable because of its milk and butterfat production. Jerseys have a wide range of color. The color in jerseys may vary from a very light gray or mouse color to a very dark fawn or a shade that is almost black. The breed is adaptable to a wide range of climatic and geographical conditions. They are excellent grazers and perform well in intensive grazing programs. With its diminutive size, the jersey produces more milk per body weight than any other breed. Usually dip in the body, cows have long, straight top lines. Jersey cows are usually docile and rather easy to manage. Under optimum conditions, the average milk production is about 6,800 kilograms of milk in a 305-day period. Breeding Principles Raising cattle for milk production requires close attention to breeding them so that they can produce the most milk possible. A farmer should keep proper and accurate records in order to maintain and improve breeding and easily manage his or her farm. Records are of great importance when it comes to registration. The objective for breeding is improvement of the future offspring through genetic inheritance. Breeders select animals expressing excellent traits 
for desired products. Animals displaying undesired traits are culled from the herd. Though production traits are usually inherited, their performance is mostly influenced by nutrition, health and the environment. In breeding for milk production, you will have to select the best cows and select the best bull. Selecting the cow The best heifers and cows for you to start with are those which are quite in temperament and which have some evidence of dairy blood. If there are none of these, start with quiet local animals with a history of successful breeding and use a dairy bull over them to produce upgraded offspring. Sometimes it may be expensive for a farmer to buy a dairy cow, so you can upgrade your own to pedigree. The objective of the grading up scheme is to improve the standard of the cow by a system of each succeeding generation moving up till a standard considered necessary for pedigree is recorded. Foundation grade Foundation grade refers to a cow typical of a particular breed by inspection and clearly identifiable but with very scanty details of its ancestry or none at all. The mother, this is the mother. So they said it has gone into pool. Eh? They said it has gone, then the, the, the daughter will be, will go to intermediate. Yeah. yeah. So because they don't know the origin of this one. And because we are starting another breed. Intermediate grade. This is a female calf of a foundation animal sired by a registered pedigree sire with proof of service. Appendix grade. Appendix grade is a female calf of an intermediate animal that is officially milk recorded. This is automatic with proof of service with a pedigree registered sire. An appendix animal may be upgraded to pedigree status on presentation of a certificate from the breed society that it conforms with their rules. Pedigree grade. This is a calf of an appendix or pedigree cow that is officially milk recorded, sired by a registered pedigree sire with proof of service and conforming to all laid down breed standards. To start a dairy herd, the first cows should have these characteristics. Be of obvious dairy stock, that is, crossbreeds. Preferably, they should already have culled and therefore demonstrating reproduction potential. Have a good udder and teats. They should have a quiet and handle able temperament. Be as close as possible in shape and appearance to the cow you're looking for in the end. You can use artificial insemination for breeding and upgrading your cows. You will know your cow is ready to be mated when she shows the following characteristics. Bellowing and perhaps walking up and down a fence line. Streams of clear mucus may also be coming from the vulva. Mounting or being mounted by other cows. If she is running with other cows, her tail may be slightly raised and the hair on the top of the base of her tail may be roughened and standing up. If she is milking, her milk production may suddenly fall a little. Heifers may not show these heat signs as strongly as cows. So it is preferable to keep heifers and cows separate. Heat occurs every 18 to 21 days and lasts for about 18 hours. A cow or heifer will continue to come on heat every 18 to 21 days until she is successfully mated and becomes pregnant. If you see a cow on heat in the morning, it is best to have her mated at that time 
and again in the afternoon of the same day. Once a cow becomes pregnant, she will not usually come again into heat until after she has calved. What is the importance of livestock registration and milk recording? Registration primarily is done by farmers themselves through the breed societies. And these breed societies are, fill, are, are specific to breeds. And it is them, the breed societies develop standards to, for example, if you're talking for a freshian, it's the freshian breed society that develops the standards of excellence or what we call the true to form of each of these breeds. The importance of going through that process to a farmer is that one, <coughs> it helps the farmer to keep track of his breeding in that from all those stages the farmer will now be able to know which line to follow. If it's a freshian, it must be a freshian from the Found.